time. Um, I just first of all want to say thank you very much for finding the time um, to meet us today and I understand with a role like yours a lot of responsibilities and duties come with it. Um, so thank you again for meeting us and finding the time, like I said, um, to kind of discuss this and talk about our campaign. Um, first of all, allow me please to talk um, about Team V and explain what Team V is. Um, like I mentioned earlier before um, we actually do this, Team V is a group of young people campaigning for positive change in communities. Um, and it's us 20, you know, 16 to 25 years old um, who are socially aware and want to change things for better. Um, like I mentioned as well, uh, we're working on a campaign to improve children, children's literacy using the power of stories. Um, let me first of all tell you some statistics about illiteracy amongst children, and I want you to comment on that on these, please. Uh, one in three children in the UK do not own a book, and 25% do not think reading is important. 10% aged 8 to 16 say that they don't enjoy reading at all, and a quarter of these do not link reading with success. Um, what do you think, or what are your views about these statistics? Well, I'm not actually that surprised at the statistics you mentioned. I used to be a governor of a junior school, so I have some idea, and in fact, of quality further education. So education is something I've taken a lot of interest in. I think it's really it's sad in light of the fact that uh, you know, we are quite a rich nation. Uh, we do spend a lot of money in our education system and in, you know, good schools and teachers and kids are sent up to school at quite young age. And it is um, a real indictment actually on all of us of the fact that our children are not coming out with basic literacy skills. And of course, the fact that they don't think that uh, being able to read is, uh, has any connection with perhaps success in later lives. So for me, I'm not surprised by your figures. Um, I think what we need to be doing is more and more to ensure that the basic literacy skills are taught at school. And perhaps, I'm not normally one in for testing of school children ad nauseum, but I know that about the only time I've sort of agreed with having these sort of uh, stats at very early young ages for children is to see whether they are being able to read and write because I suppose without a system of monitoring, you'll never know who slipped the net. And I think it's important at that point when, it, when they realise, when the schools realise that certain children, uh, reading and literacy is not up to certain standards at certain age, then in fact that particular school should actually set aside resources and special sessions for those children who can then be, they can concentrate on actually just teaching them how to read and write. So, um, because these statistics, we're actually talking about children who read, read for leisure, not because their teachers told them to. We want um, children to read because this is their passion or because they love it <coughs> and they enjoy it. And of course, you know, the, you know, the importance of reading, what reading can do to you, really. Uh, but who do you, so who are you saying it is responsibility to kind of encourage children to read? I think it's actually responsibility of school, parents, and even us as a community. I mean, everyone talks about issues and challenges we have, but how many people sort of, uh, who live next door to a family where there's some young children, how many of us actually bother asking or talking to that family and seeing whether, you know, just getting to know the family and seeing whether those children in those families, how they're succeeding or how well they're doing. And, you know, so I suppose even take a mentoring role. Um, and I think we, as a society, have let down a lot of people, not just our children, mm. but as elderly people as well, but I mean, that's a different topic. Mm. So we just don't take enough notice or care of what is happening in our next door neighbours. And I don't mean being nosy park rest of their personal lives, but to see if you know you can see some families where there may be issues, then I think we should be all supporting them as individuals, but also obviously professionals in school should be noticing the children whose literacy or writing is an issue and of course parents and of course we should just try to make reading more enjoyable as well um, you know maybe talk to children find out what kind of books they need it doesn't mean to say that I mean, some of the people think well reading must be you know D.H. Lawrence or Thomas Hardy but it could be I don't know cart uh, sort of a magazine with cartoons in it at the end of the day you're only reading so and it may well be the children may like to learn or find a story of one of these sort of uh, um, cartoon type of stories that they enjoy reading, comics, uh, strip, you know, things like that. I mean, I, I think we should be much more uh, imaginative in what we give children as their reading material. 
I mean, some of the girls want to read about, you know, makeup and fashion. Well, okay, just get them some books with makeup and fashion. And as long as they're reading, or if the boys want to learn about technical things, and I'm here stereotyping, <laughs> there are people who do it across. But what I'm saying is, if an individual is interested in a particular thing, why not get books that gear to whatever their interest may be? And then they're more likely to read it. But the important thing is that they should be learning to read and then obviously writing as well. I do agree with what you said um, and I think it's very relevant to our campaign what we do. We're always trying to find that creative spin and that unique way that other people have not really thought about. Like I mentioned earlier, we're trying to do pop-up story circles, uh, we're trying to do, which is something that not many people do actually these days, not many people do tell stories to their children or their grand children or their neighbours, like you said, it's not it's, it's the community's real responsibility to, to, tell, to talk to children and encourage them to read. Um, just going back to that point where you mentioned, where we mentioned the statistics, that the fact that there's a quarter of young people that do not link success with reading. Do you actually think that reading have helped you to get to where you are with your career? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you have to understand, when I was talking about reading wherever you have, I mean, I'm one of those persons who actually learn English by means of reading books and watching television and listening to the radio. Because I came to this country when I was nine years of age, couldn't speak a word of English, mm -hmm. went to a school. In those days, there wasn't any special classes to help you if you were sort of, you know, children coming from different languages and background, like there is now, for example, in schools. Mm -hmm. So for me to actually learn English, I had to read loads of books and listen to television to be able to pronounce and understand. And if I hadn't done that, I would have failed completely in the school. Mm -hmm. I think that's an awesome point because you're now like a role model to your community and everyone kind of, you're telling everyone that reading has helped you to get to where you are. Maybe that's a really good point to put across to children in Bolton and everywhere really, that reading can, it can be definitely linked, 100% linked, linked to success and can get you to places that you never thought you would be. Um, just putting aside your role as an MP, um, Yasmin as a child, did you used to read when you were a child? I used to read a lot. <laughs> I was a very, very boring child. <laughs> I used to read a lot and watch a lot of television as well though. <laughs> right, okay. So do you want to give us examples of what you used to read? Yeah, I mean I started reading, and this sounds <laughs> a bit strange, but I started reading some of the more serious books when I was about 11, 12, like oh. Thomas Hardy, D.H. Lawrence and others. Um, and of course, I also read sort of silly books as well, mm -hmm. so fun books as well. And I, and I found they were really helpful because I think reading those books actually also is what led me to join the Labour Party quite quickly as well. Because I, was, mm -hmm. I was 15 when I joined the Labour Party. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe because I had exposure to those types of books and things, that it kind of made me think more about social issues and about life mm -hmm. um, and things that happen in society. And I think that probably is what led me to become politically active as well. Mm -hmm. So for me, I mean, I suppose, but I mean, I, I came from a very kind of, um, I suppose you could say from a, a fairly uh, conservative, small C uh, family where my mum was and dad were very strict about, you know, what we could do and not do. And maybe, I don't know, perhaps I, fall in, I fell into reading p purely by accident. I don't know whether it was that or whether because I actually love reading and I love learning about things. It, knowledge. It worked, it worked out very well. Really. It's worked out well for me, <laughs> whichever way it happened. So what's your favourite book then? I have to say, I'm asked this question and the, my favourite book has to be, and it still is after all these years, is Tess by Thomas Hardy. Mm -hmm. So why is it your favourite book? What did you find specifically in that book that you couldn't find anywhere else? Um, I think it was just the quality of writing and it's the way, there's a particular chapter and I can still remember even these years, where what had happened mm -hmm. and the writer wrote in such a way they actually took you a while to understand what had actually occurred and I had to read about three times before I figured out <laughs> what had actually happened and I thought that was actually amazing because you know maybe because I was younger and I hadn't appreciated mm -hmm. if I had read it as an older person I might have got it in the first go mm -hmm. but it took me a couple of times to work out what had happened and I thought that was a brilliant piece of writing. So you like um, the sort of books that will get you exploring and thinking and going to places that you never thought you would? And my other book which is which I really love but people here would know about mm -hmm. and that is a because I'm from originally from Pakistan and I speak Punjabi and Urdu as well mm -hmm. and there's a very famous book by a Punjabi uh, writer mm -hmm. it's called Saful Maluk and that I think is one of the best books going. It's a bit like Iliad and Homer but it's in Punjabi and it's kind of travels of somebody through life. And that I think is one of the most 
<laughs> I think that's a brilliant book. <laughs> so, um, do you have a favourite quote from your book reading experience? I think the favourite quote I have is actually comes from the book I'm talking about, the Punjabi book, Safa Muluk. It's named after a prince, mm -hmm. and there's a very famous lake in Pakistan named after it as well. And there's one little passage which says something like, I mean, translated literally in English, it means that if you keep bad company, you will end up in bad ways. Mm. That's what it literally it kind of translates into. <laughs> and so what it's saying is that the company you keep, it's really important as to how you turn out in life. That's true, that's true, because they always say you are who you hang around with or who your friends are. That's a really interesting quote. Thank you, Yasmin, it's been really lovely to see you today. And um, like I mentioned earlier, thank you very much for having the time to meet with us and talk to us about campaign and your lovely book reading experience. Um, you actually took us in a journey way, way back um, to when we, you were a child and to your reading experience. Is there one last thing that you would like to say uh, to the children in Bolton and the children everywhere, really? I would say that please go out and read anything that you want to, whether it's comic magazines, whether it's you know what we call silly books, whether it's serious books, but read because you will really, really enjoy it. And actually it will open your eyes to a lot of things in life and will make you at the end of it, I think, or by the end of it, a better person. Thank you very much, Yasmin, uh, for meeting us today, for having the time. It's been lovely to see you and talk to you about our campaign. Uh, for more information about our campaign about TMV and what we do, please visit our website, theinspired.com slash TMV.